So what I'm going to do now is to show you how to create a quick uh, and quite simple brainfuck interpreter for the C Sharp language. And uh, as you can see here, we have the uh, brainfuck um, implementation of Hello World. Um, I think you should look it up on Wikipedia. This is also where I took the example program here from. Uh, there, there, the the brainfuck language is um, explained and so we don't have to do that here. Uh, the BrainFuck interpreter basically is a class. I make my classes usually sealed as long as I don't want to derive from them and I make them internal. I do that also to make my intents uh, clear and to stay on, the stay on the safe side. So we have a um, constructor for the interpreter where we put the program code. We gi we um, inject basically an input delegate, uh, an output delegate. The program code is uh, stored in the form of a character array. We store the delegates and then we create the instruction set. Usually you should not do invariant things like this in the constructor, but I think for the simple uh, demonstration program it is quite okay to do that. Uh, I won't go over the instruction set now because it is because you can find tons of sources on the internet about that. Basically, I, what I, there's one specialty that I uh, that I put into here. It is the it is since I didn't want to write a full EBNF, I cre I thought I would provide the the looping and the conditional looping uh, via a simple call stack system. I think for those of you who um, who um, uh, who know about the C-sharp.net language, it should be no problem to understand uh, the use of the trinary operator here, and um, I don't think that there should be any problem. The only thing that I want to mention is the way that I, I use input and output. With input and output, with, with the delegate gates, I mean an interface to the real world, so we can handle keyboard input in our BrainFuck programs, and also, which is more important, we can also handle screen output. So, uh, running a program is also quite easy, I think. Um, you know, we, we simply iterate an, until the instruction pointer goes beyond the end of the program. We have no end of program instruction in BrainFuck, so we have to determine this by the length of, length of, the, of, the, of the program of the source itself. In BrainFuck, everything that is not an uh, executable instruction is considered a remark, a comment. So we use try get value from our instruction set dictionary, which you can find here. If there was something that we can work with, we execute it. If not, then you know nothing happens, and then we increase the instruction pointer so we get through the whole program. Um, I think the variables, the member variables that I use here are quite straightforward. We have a call stack. I'm not absolutely sure if we need that in BrainFuck, but uh, I implemented it. So you can theoretically, okay, have, um, have, have, have nested loops. Then here you have the input uh, uh, delegate. Here you have the instruction set dictionary. Here is the memory. BrainFuck is specified to provide 32 kilobytes. I'm not sure. There is are, there are other sources that say a BrainFuck interpreter should provide 30,000 bytes. Um, I'm not absolutely. I thought I would go with the more straightforward solution and say I take this two complements number. So here we have the output uh, delegate. Uh, this is where the source goes, the data pointer, the instruction pointer. This works a lot like a normal CPU. Basically, you can say that this um, uh, BrainFuck programs are uh, uh, a bit like bytecode. It is a bit bytecode-ish. So, this is the interpreter. It's quite straightforward. It is a very simple CPU which we have here and a very simple instruction set and we have a very simple memory of 32 kilobytes. Uh, um, interesting with interest, very interesting about BrainFuck is the fact that BrainFuck actually is considered to be Turing complete. Uh, this means that uh, with given an infinite amount of random access memory, it would be possible to calculate every conceivable function. 
However, we are not going to do that. We are only going to show Hello World on the screen. So we need at least a little bit of, um, of, a, of a random environment. This is provided via the program entry point class. Uh, which is quite a, uh, um, a conservative denomination, but you know, having started to write software in the late 80s, you know, one uh, you never never stops thinking in those terms. So we, here it is, what I call the keyboard input delegate. It's quite simple. You we, we read a key, take its character, and then uh, re-encode it to ASCII. So we have a one byte representation, which is compatible with the specification of this language. Here we have the screen output delegate, works quite the opposite. And here is the program we are quite courteous. We are loading Hello World. You wouldn't do that in the real implementation of an interpreter like this, but yeah, and you I think you would also use dependence injection to um to inject the, the, the delegates. However, I think uh, for demonstrative purposes, it is a good thing that I also reduce the complexity of this interpreter. I have a much more interesting version of this, but uh, it would go too far. So what we do is we uh, instantiate the class, uh, load the program, uh, inject the, 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 the delegates for input and output, and then we run. So, and if we do that, sorry, what you can see is that the interpreter is still cautious and hello world and so we are done. Um, I think this is a quite an interesting example and I also hope that maybe it inspires you to do something similar yourself or maybe you have ideas. I was thinking about um, you know compiling this uh, whole thing. I was thinking about uh, writing my own EBNF in irony.net. These are the plans that I'm going to do that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to, to, to follow. So thank you for watching.